I'm Matt Gelka in Washington, where the big promises from Elon Musk's Department of Government Efficiency are now getting some congressional backing. Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy are the big names attached to the Department of Government Efficiency, or DOGE, but their ambitious project to cut government waste will be in an advisory role. Now, members of Congress are getting posts in official capacities, including Georgia Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene, who will chair the House's DOGE subcommittee. There are so many government agencies and government programs and contracts that their, their cause, their purpose has expired and they're no longer needed. And the American people shouldn't have to pay for them, but yet their budgets get reauthorized year after year. Iowa Republican Joni Ernst will head up the Senate's Doge Caucus. She's already met with President-elect Donald Trump and Musk. Ernst plans to take aim at remote work as there will be a push to get all federal employees back in the office. We can talk about the telework activities that we have seen over the course of the last three years and federal government employees that are simply not working. They don't want the transparency. They don't want us to know that they're only working maybe 10 hours a week. Musk and Ramaswamy are leaning heavily on friends from business and tech to build up their advisory panel. Their goal to cut $500 billion in annual spending and slash the federal workforce is likely to hit hurdles both on Capitol Hill and in the courts. So if they go to say there needs to be more open competition, not the monopolization in defense contractors and propose recommendations, that's something that I think could uh, be supported. If they find areas of truly wasteful spending across the government, they would get support. But if they start to recommend cuts in Social Security or Medicare, or Title I education funding, they'll face strong resistance. A majority of the country's annual $7 trillion budget is split between Medicare, Social Security, and defense spending. Targeting any of those three sectors for significant cuts would likely see strong bipartisan pushback. Reporting in Washington, I'm Matt Gelka.